Hello, everybody, and welcome to McCormick Place in Chicago. We're here at Automate 2024. Tim Culverhouse, Editorial D Director of Robotics 24-7, joined today by CEO of Comal, Pietro Gorlier. Pietro, thank you so much for taking some time. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to be at the Comal booth, and uh, it's a pleasure to sit down and chat with you today. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. Yeah. And so what do we have going on at the Comal booth here at Automate 2024? Well, Automate is very important for us. I mean, obviously, I mean, being, being a company that have been working in automation for 51 years, actually. We celebrate in 2023, 50 years of history. Mm -hmm. uh, our main, main uh, new products here are the S-Robot family. I mean, it's a new family of robots that are water and dust resistant, um, mainly for handling, but also for, uh, for welding. Um, and the, a touch of, uh, I would say, history. I mean, they, we go back to the red color that has been mm -hmm. always the, the iconic color of, uh, of Comau robot. Um, one uh, particular solution we are very, very proud of is uh, our uh, Mira One picker. I mean, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, a system for, uh, for picking um, that uh, through a vision system can obviously recognize objects of different dimensions and deciding, I mean, what actions to do. That is also, I would say, part of our strategy. We are obviously uh, a company with a long heritage in the automotive business, mm -hmm. but we are now moving in other sectors. Uh, and, uh, and so this is why here you see a lot of uh, solutions that are not for automotive, but obviously for for fulfillment and for other other segments of business. Uh, we have also our exoskeletons uh, here. That is a product line that is growing in our portfolio. Um, we have both the, the high, I mean, uh, body uh, side uh, exoskeleton and the lumbar one. Uh, obviously, they both uh, support uh, um, kind of uh, heavy operations of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of work. So another, another product we are very proud of is our EDU robot. I mean, uh, um, it's a small part of our business, but uh, I would say very exciting. Uh, it started as an educational uh, robot for schools, uh, colleges, uh, to give the possibility to young people to approach mm -hmm. robotics but then moved to be uh, uh, also a supporter for companies that are entering into the automation business. And uh, so we are obviously presenting here the, the, the last version of the robot. Very, very exciting. Now, going back a little bit, you had mentioned some of the different sectors that you were looking at entering and expanding on here for Comal, while also alluding to your 50 plus years in the automation industry. What new sectors and being here at Automate, you get to see robotic integration from all around the world. What new sectors are you guys excited about? Well, obviously, the first uh, transition for, for us has been from automotive to what we call e-mobility. Mm -hmm. So everything around the electrification of the uh, of automotive business. And uh, we actually have been able in the last few years uh, uh, already to grow up to about 30, 35% of our business in everything that is uh, connected to batteries, electric motors, mm. uh, and, uh, and, uh, and another development in the next few years will be in the recycling of, uh, of batteries. Mm. And, uh, and then, as I said, there is instead uh, an expansion outside completely the mobility sector. Uh, the main uh, areas we have started uh, um, uh, touching are uh, as I said, fulfillment, logistics, uh, that's obviously big demand. If you go around hmm. the show, you see a lot of uh, pickers of and, uh, and uh, palletizers, the palletizers. Um, we have an uh, interesting project in, um, in, the sh in uh, shipbuilding. Okay. Uh, and, and that's an interesting angle because uh, why shipbuilding that you, you don't expect uh, I mean, yeah. uh, automation? Well, the main reason is that there are some jobs into that industry for which uh, the uh, the availability of labor is very is very um, is very scarce. Mm -hmm. um, think about welding. We don't you don't fire welder. Yep. I mean, and to build a ship, you need a, 
I mean, miles of, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of welding. So we are actually building solutions where we um, put a, a robot into uh, an AGB uh, with a welding system, and the robot can go along the ship, uh, kind of welding. Uh, so very in interesting. We have another pro other projects into aerospace, uh, for okay. instance, for uh, helicopter blades, uh, both the building, assembling, and also testing. So these are some of the sectors, the new sectors that we are approaching. A bit expansive outside of the automotive industry and what you guys are looking to do here. Well, I, I think the, you know, automotive business is, uh, uh, is the most uh, uh, automatized business. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, I think, uh, if I remember right, uh, the last time I checked, automotive is 10 times more... Um, using more automation than the second largest. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know why. I mean, you you have these plants uh, where thousands of cars are built uh, every day. You need to be absolutely precise. And we have a long depreciation of the investments mm -hmm. in the long run. The new sectors that are asking and coming to automotive now, they don't really know exactly what they want. Um, so it becomes very interesting to invent a solution. Mm -hmm. It's kind of going back many years in a new in a new environment. And so we 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 can building on our heritage, mm -hmm. I think we can serve these uh, these new sectors. Now in terms of new sectors, you see new technologies going on and here at Automate everybody has AI involved in some way shape or form. What's Comal doing on the AI front? Well, obviously, is uh, I mentioned, for instance, our mirror picker. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you talk when you talk about uh, picking items with different uh, shape, different weight, obviously, artificial intelligence. Uh, I mean, algorithm of artificial mm -hmm. intelligence are very helpful to make uh, uh, the solution agnostic to what they have to do. Uh, we have an important project with Intrinsic that is here at Automate as well, uh, where exactly we are developing uh, solutions of uh, picking solutions uh, using uh, algorithm of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's important always the association between artificial intelligence with the vision system. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I would say that vision and uh, and obviously AI are the two key elements uh, for the for the future also because these uh, as i mentioned before these new sectors mm -hmm. they don't have the uh the characteristic of automotive where you do the same thing thousands of times every day for many years yep uh, they need to be flexible and to be flexible it means that you need to develop solutions where uh, the 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 system is able to evolve according mm -hmm. to the mission that you have to uh, fulfill. An example, if you work on a packaging inside a, 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 a fulfillment, uh, in the fulfillment center or warehousing center of a superstore, mm -hmm. I mean, the Walmart, the Targets, the, this, uh, this kind of Costco, well, every day you have a new offer. So one day you need to put together uh, three toothpaste. The next day is a toothpaste with the, with, with a with a with a toothbrush. Yep. Um, you can imagine every time to redevelop completely the software because the mission is different. Mm -hmm. So artificial intelligence helps uh, to build a flexible solution in these sectors. I see at your booth the power of automation, but I know one of the other messages come out is putting out at Automate and throughout its range of products is accessibility. So what is Comal doing to make robots more accessible for a wider audience? Well, what, back, back to what we were discussing, uh, AI is uh, one of these uh, drivers because it allows to uh, build solutions that are uh, flexible and so the investment in the long term becomes uh, becomes lower. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, obviously, uh, all the all of what it is around the cobots and so uh, collaborative uh, robots, where you can deploy solutions uh, that does that that don't need all the fences and so are. 
can be installed in, into into the, um, the 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 customer side uh, uh, at a lower cost. And last but not least, uh, obviously standardization. The more you can standardize your solutions, and the more obviously you can be efficient and effective, uh, also from a cost standpoint. And I know some recent news from you guys, like you mentioned before, the return of your historic red robotic family, the S robot family as well. Uh, what else is new on the horizon for Comal here moving forward in 2024? Well, I, I think a big effort, uh, two big efforts. One, uh, as I said, is uh, in, in the e-mobility, so mm -hmm. in the uh, supporting the electrification of transportation. Uh, as I said, it's already more than 35% of our business, but uh, we expect that to become 50% oh, wow. at least. Uh, that's the result simply of what's happening to the, the automotive sector. Now, we see some slowdown, but uh, I would say still uh, uh, is a very consistent, uh, um, uh, a very consistent growth. And uh, we are uh, uh, in already in some gigafactories and we, we plan obviously to expand mm. our solutions in that field. And, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, a, big, uh, a big push into the, into the fulfillment and logistic uh, side of the oh. business, where the demand is high. We expect in the next few years uh, growing, uh, the demand of automation growing more than 14% uh, every year. Yes. Uh, I think uh, the, if you look at how crowded is uh, the, the show here, you, you understand uh, the interest. And uh, fulfillment is definitely uh, fulfillment, warehousing, packaging. I mean, everything mm -hmm. around uh, the logistic sector uh, is probably the area where we will see uh, bigger growth. Now you mentioned, along with some of the other industries that you're doing, but the educational side of things and the Comal Academy. Can you elaborate a little bit what Comal is doing on the educational front? Well, uh, something that I, I think is pretty interesting and something also different from what you can see here mm -hmm. at Automate. So we we started uh, an education business as an academy, starting from uh, something that we do for our customers. When you deploy a solution, then you need to do training for the yep. customer. Okay. So from there, we said, okay, maybe that, uh, that uh, training can be used to support education of, uh, of uh, talents, a new, younger generation okay. that may want to approach the, uh, the automation business. Mm -hmm. And I think that is relevant because uh, you know how difficult it is to find the new talents, uh, mm -hmm. uh, specifically on some of the industrial sector. So that, uh, that, was, that is the, the origin of EDU. Mm -hmm. But then we found out uh, something uh, very interesting in the last few years. Uh, expanding outside uh, uh, automotive these new sectors that are approaching for the first time uh, uh, automation the need of automation they don't have an heritage mm -hmm. i mean uh, when we work with automotive automotive has hundred years of automation and uh, and uh, so is uh, clearly they have built uh, their own uh, uh, training uh, system mm -hmm. And so now we are offering with our academy um, uh, training to whoever wants to approach automation, mm -hmm. and in some cases even even doesn't know exactly what they, what what he, he, he mm -hmm. wants, and uh, and that's uh, that's one uh, one interesting development. And uh, we have uh, uh, an academy team is uh, one of the um, plus of Komau is that we are evenly. Uh, covering uh, uh, North America, South America, Europe, uh, mm -hmm. and also uh, Asia Pacific. So we can provide uh, training uh, everywhere um, uh, with local uh, with local teams. Mm. So very, very interesting side of the business. You get a benefit of starting from scratch as compared to those years of history and yeah. repetition. Um, outside of the robotics and the cobots and the arms that you have here, also noticed your MATE exoskeleton. So could you talk a little bit about what we have with the MATE program? Yeah, the MATE program uh, uh, is, is simply starting from uh, the uh, understanding that uh, in, uh, in many sectors, you have uh, um, operation that requires a lot of effort from, mm -hmm. uh, from, the, uh, from the worker. And, uh, and so 
we actually started uh, looking at the um, automotive lines where mm -hmm. you still have uh, a lot of uh, of, uh, of um, work done uh, uh, underneath a car mm -hmm. as you've done uh, yes. like painting or something you understand uh, how difficult it is to stay to stand uh, and doing something over your head mm -hmm. so we developed the uh, higher body exoskeleton that is mm -hmm. actually is not uh, um, is not uh, uh, motorized okay so it's just uh, uh, using a system of levers it uh, removes the weight from your hands so essentially you can stay with the hands uh, up okay and you don't feel any 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 weight and uh, and then we move to the lumbar as a skeleton that instead is helpful when you need to lift something. Full disclosure: we are not trying to transform uh, workers in robots. Mm -hmm. Normally, that's the the first reaction. Yep. I don't want to become a robotized <laughs> person. We are simply trying to remove the effort and make uh, the operation lighter and less uh, um, creating less fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen applications now. is a is a sector that is growing. If mm -hmm. you go around, you can see uh, a number of exoskeletons in the market. But uh, it's still a, a sector that is growing. Uh, but definitely is making some operations easier, uh, and uh, is supporting the well-being of uh, of, uh, well. of the employees and uh, and the workers uh, on uh, particularly on heavy heavy operations. Um, so we we have launched now the lumbar just a few months ago, so we are now ready to attack the market. Uh, it requires, in fairness, it requires some vision from mm -hmm. the from uh, the leadership of a company. Yep. Because obviously, it's one of those uh, uh, positive effects that you don't immediately transform in a return of the investment. But there is no doubt that uh, it make it, it makes uh, people uh, more comfortable uh, in in some heavy operations and uh, and uh, helping the well-being of uh, of the employees. Hmm. Well, thank you for taking some time at uh, Automate here in Chicago to chat, and look forward to hearing more about Comal and all the different and exciting products that you guys have coming out today, throughout the year, and in the future. So, thank you for stopping by. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you.